everyone and welcome back to my testing lab. Today we'll be looking at, well, can you see by the projector there? Two, well, two, three, really. Tool 3.0. Uh, oh, actually, should we get this one printed off quickly? Do, do, do. Down she comes. Oh, that's not a button. Down she comes. Uh, a little bit of admining. This printer is built by High Ground. Uh, I'll link him in the description. Uh, same with the, actually the original concept of Tool the Third. He came up with a great idea with a sensor that I had to incorporate. It was too good. Uh, this printer design, I'm not sure if it's up in the workshop, but he's got a new one, third design of his printers that is actually coming out, that is really good, I've already had to play around with it. A lot better than previous design of printers that we used in the survival series. Uh, a little more stabler. And less times of exploding killing us all. Get that on build. And get pulling out. Oh, just make sure it finishes everything. Uh, Leave that to his business. Leave that. Do, 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 do. Yeah, always frame rate drops when you do these printers. Actually, it's already nearly done. This printer, that's what I quite like about this printer for small ships. It pulls them out really fast. Look, there's a... Nearly done. Boom. And it's just got the little bits that are actually left over from uh, using Aaron's printer. What I do need to pull out. And done. I think I've actually got two tools outside. I'm going to look at them and start pulling them apart and explain how I built them. Oh, yep, out by my oxygen farm. I've got one there that's got the grinders on it. And here's tool three. Did you see it in the series? Okay, nothing really special about it in my opinion. Four welders at the front. The sensor that's the auto cut off for the uh, Welders, it was high ground design that I again had to appropriate because it's just too good. And at times, I probably died in the series to do to welders. He's getting ridiculously high. Then we've got the little light that's alright. Nice little thing. Kills the frame rate. Actually, I'll just switch that off so it doesn't screw the frame rate anymore. Okay, so let's start pulling this apart. If we take the. I'm going to start the start all the way down. We'll just take that out. Inside, inside this we've got one large storage container right in the centre, a camera at the back for reverse to connect up, a oxygen tank, I think we try and copy in all my oxygen tank, uh, all my ships, an oxygen tank from that one. I just see it's too much of a help now, especially, you don't seem to get a lot of oxygen. Just continue down, taking it Now if we take this, take this layer off, do do without destroying anything else. You'll see that there is the conveyor going through there into one of the conveyor blocks. And off that one conveyor block, there's always four, uh, three, sorry, uh, small pores. Well, I've put the, all my small reactors on, so that means there is 12 small reactors in total powering this whole ship. Actually, let's take this whole area off again. And what I always think's best to have about this is find another headless chicken. On my welder ship, stable, so it's a large amount of small thrusters on all sides. So you, this side you've got four, the back you've got a little bit more, uh, just because you want to get a little faster going places. Four on each that side, six in the front, and I think there is six top and bottom. Now that means it's very stable. You know, it's not going to fly around the place, it's not going to be a tell thing. It's stage is designed for uh, the cannibal that we have in the ship right now. In the ship, in the show right now. Uh, it's got two large thrusters at the back. And the problem with that, really in my opinion, is two large thrusters, you seem to hit things. You're too much forward thrust and you just do more damage and good. Again, if you want to strip layers off this. And we get down to the very bottom. The whole thing's very compact, you know. The workings of this ship is, you know, when you take all the skin off, it is just the large container, an L shape, well, four L shapes, and the connector, and that's everything off of that. And all the rest, the gyroscopes, the antenna, the oxygen tank, are just slotted in behind the cockpit in this nice gap. It's actually perfectly sized for it, right in the middle. Now, my idea of this is just quick. 
cheap, easy to build. You know, you can't get much more complicated than this. So, you know, if you go more complicated, you are going to end up problems. You, know, you could build more welders out, then it starts getting ungamey and a bit hard to control, in my opinion. You can add more welders on top. Again, you're just going to increase the size more. Again, you don't need to make it any bigger. Four welders, in my opinion, is more than enough to just shoot along the side of a ship and get it built. You know, I can build a ship really fast with this. If someone just done all the skinning, I'm just putting all the layers down. It's dead stable, so you don't bash stuff. I think it actually looks not bad, in my opinion. It's not, not the ugliest, not the prettiest, but it's a it's a machine. It's for building stuff. You know, you want a nice, sleek, cool-looking fighter, fair enough. But if you're building a utility vehicle, that is what you want. Don't care about the aesthetics, just get it built and build it so it works, does the job well. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Okay, it's very quick, just a quick breakdown. It's a very simple ship to break down. And hopefully next time when I do one of these, it'll be the drone carrier that I'm in the middle of working on. Hope this kept you interested. If you've enjoyed it, please come back and watch more. Keep subscribing, keep watching, just keep enjoying. Hello everyone, thought I'd do this little extra bit. Just as I was recording the video, update came. And DirectX 11's out! Whee! Prettier thing so far, the only thing I've actually looked at is... There we go, a little lag there before I crashed. Uh, might have made my game a little unstable New rendered floodlights, which is great, but they don't seem to have as much oomph. Problems! Crashed a few times, I had to remove all the mods. Put them back on, trying to figure out which ones are causing the problems. Uh, skyboxes no longer work. Well, the vanilla one works, but the rest are all gone. But that's probably needing updated. And mods, if you put them back in. Where are my mods? So, we'll go flat gun I've got. Crash my game. So, I'm sorry to say this. Modders, if you put a mod up in the workshop, please update your game. Supposedly, the Tell the tools for the do it are out. I hope. Probably. Uh, I don't know about this. Uh, should Steam developers remove mods that are not DirectX 11 compatible after a certain amount of time? Or should it be an option that you go on to, to say, I want only DirectX 11 mods? I'm not really sure. It's up to you, community people, to put your opinions in the forums. Keen software have always been good to listen to us. Uh, I know that some modders will be going, I don't really want to go back and change my mods. But if they're no longer working and they do crash your game, that could be a bit of a problem. Don't want to have a project you've worked on for weeks, months. Okay, some of my projects could even be classing the years. Crashing and not working anymore. Losing data. I don't really know, people. It's up to you. I'm not really wanting mods that don't work, but... Just blanket removing mods off the off the workshop might not be a good idea. Oh well, up to you guys. See you all later.